So I'm going to start this run with uh, the Keepsake of Hercules, which gives me additional damage to start the run. I didn't mean to have this on, it just was the uh, the Keepsake I had on at the time, and I just kind of rushed into <laughs> having to go with the Scythe. And I'm also taking Tula for an extra um, Death Defied. So let's get into the run. So yeah, this is my first time ever voiceovering over some footage I've already captured, so let me know what you find of this commentary element. I do stream, so talking over gameplay is not unnatural to me. Oh, we're gonna have some time skips here, by the way. I cut out a lot of the forest especially. I kept in our boss fights, and we're just grabbing the Daedalic Hammer here, which will be key for this run. We got the Zeus Boon to start for the special. You'll notice as well that I have a heat level. I don't know what they're called in this game, uh, which you might have noticed earlier. But essentially the heat levels from Hades 1. Uh, yeah, this one gives the blue heart, which basically protects them for a hit before you can start doing damage to their shields and, and then their health. That means that this, as you'll see there, that special move isn't much use to us because we can't follow up the hit very quickly. Whereas this X special move is quickly becoming, you know, I can quickly tell that this is the way to take this run. The other thing I'm noticing is that the Scythe is a little bit faster than the Axe. You'll see here as well, we're going to channel our X, or our Mega Attack even, um, a bit faster. Another time jump, straight into the boss fight. What's that you're brandishing? To see how we perform with a few other upgrades. I think we have a... An Aphrodite upgrade now for our dodges. So yeah, we have a dodge from Aphrodite, and we have we still only have our Zeus Boon. We have a couple of bits at the bottom, I can't remember what they are, but I've kept in the moments where we get stuff which is going to be key to the run. Now the the special ability of the scythe is that uh, as you um, hit with it in its special moves it gains critical um, chance. As we've got it up to level two, that's up to eight. It starts off at four and goes up to 12. I haven't gone beyond that at this point. And it seems, now that I'm watching the footage back, it works on bosses. I thought it was kills and I thought it was, so like if I used it on the witches that get spawned here, that would be how we'd kind of get those moves powered back up. Um, but now watching this back, I noticed that it ticked up as we uh, as we hit the boss. Hecate. Hecate? I can never say her name. I cannot say half the names in Hades. I love these games, but... Goddamn, the Greek names, man. <laughs> so there we go. It went up by three there to the maximum of eight from doing it to the boss. Um, which is interesting to see back. Which means that... I was quite worried that this would not be as powerful later on. Oh yeah, here's a moment. It went right over the cat. I thought uh, Tula would protect me from the transformation, but... Cats are not as loyal as frogs, it turns out. We are a big Freenos gang here, but... I mean, that extra deftified, you can't really turn your nose up at it. Oh, she helped out for a second there. Thank you, cat. <laughs> But yeah, it, it does seem that as well as the uh, the spins are, I don't think, that much faster. The regular attacks do s seem like they come out just a bit faster than the standard axe. And that's even with the upgraded aspect of Melanoi, which I believe gets um, faster swings. I should have had some notes for this. <laughs> Oh, the ultimate disrespect. Mining for silver midway through the boss fight. <laughs> Absolute insubordination. Terrible. But it really does it really does hit. It hits well. I'd really be interested to see um, how powerful it is if you get it up to its maximum rank. So I'd presume it goes up to 20%. Which is mad, especially if you've got that spin move upgraded as well, like we do over the course of this run. 
I'm spinning away. Um, because then you're getting a lot of hits out in that um, interim time. Yeah, I think it, it's a pretty good weapon, like. Health, keepsake. A bit of a cut there because the keepsake, I took a little while <laughs> to think about. But we took the chaos keepsake. Um, for no particular uh, reason, except for if you've got a strong build, uh, Chaos tends to be a great choice, just to buff it up even more. I think we do unfortunately not get the Chaos Gate until um, just before the boss fight, so it does mean that we... It does mean that we have the debuff for when we fight Skilla and the Gals. Oh yeah, um, I think, the, I don't know if this is relative, uh, overly important to the run, but we do take the, um, the dodge chance. Which will, I, I don't know if it will come into play later, but we do stack some similar bonuses. Another cut there in case you were like, damn that money turned into a shop, how'd that happen? This is the boon that I was looking for uh, the whole run. I uh, don't care about the special because we use the special for distance, attacks close up. That feels like that's where this weapon's going to do its best damage. So, absolutely the boon I wanted to pair with what we already had. And yeah, it just shreds. It's awkward watching your own gameplay back. <laughs> it seems a bit poor. Yeah, one health bar, just like that. I think now I'm thinking, okay, we need a little bit more mana or some sort of mana buff, like uh, the one where uh, you get you sacrifice some total mana to recharge your bar. I think that's the sort of thing I'm thinking about now, because as long as we have a good bit of mana, we can handle pretty much anything the game can throw at us right now. And also just general upgrades to those attacks. Misjudge the movement pattern of that enemy. Okay. And transform of the boon. Oh yeah, okay, I forgot this happened here. So, Celine um, gives us a special... And, of course, we take the health upgrade. Well, not the health, but the healing spell. I don't think I upgrade it throughout, but that's an extra 75 health um, per area, which is pretty good. Oh, and here's our Chaos Gate. And uh, luckily just randomly finding the health over there. I look confused for a second there. Not uncommon. Oh yeah, I believe there's a, yeah, you'll see over to the left there, we have a darkness in this room. So if you watch the start of the video, we talked about the resources to unlock uh, the scythe. And there you go, that's, that's some darkness in the chaos room. I believe that the darkness only becomes available to you once you have opened the surface and you've gotten those other resources from chaos in the form of the seeds agonizing over the choice. I think that choice there was um, once the boon's gone, or once the debuff's gone, we get um, half the cost for channeled moves, which is excellent for what we're doing here. I don't think we have that up yet. <laughs> we're gonna have to do this, and I think it for any channeled moves that we use at the moment, we take, a hit, we take damage. So we're playing this one just with uh, basic moves. I'm pretty sure I forget. Yep. Not only once, but twice. <laughs> it's very, very impressive uh, lack of awareness on my behalf. But this is a good showcase for the weapon just as is. You see that 363 as a as a, just a single hit at the end of the combo? It's pretty good. It's pretty meaty. And we've already taken out the drummer. Always taking out the drummer first in this battle. I mean, if you get the guitarist in a good spot, it'll take her out, but the drummer has got the biggest AoE moves. I mean, and the guitarist has that one where it just stuns you or knocks you out of the way a little bit. Unless you're also dealing with the drummer, it doesn't tend to be a problem. 
Look, I'm just like, whatever, do whatever you want. And then we've got uh, Skilligo and Acapella on us. No backup tunes. Her moves come out so slow there. The only thing that's frustrating is when she starts doing the orbs. There's just not enough parts of the arena to get them stuck on. It'd be good if you could um, use the two fallen bandmates to block those. Because just having these pillars that pop up or the two cylinders at either side to, to defend yourself against those it can be a bit brutal, especially when Skiller becomes the featured artist. She fires that off a lot more. Got back up to full health for a second there. Quite a bold move to be able to leave a fight with more health than you came in with. Getting a little bit caught by Skiller. I haven't realized at this point that... Oh yeah, I guess I, I was going to say I could use my Omega to do tons of damage, but... Of course I can't, because I'm still under the effects of chaos. See what I mean about those orbs? I, I feel like if you could use um, either of the bandmates to block them, I think that'd be good. Because then it gives you a benefit for taking them out first, and sometimes you just have to eat those that damage from them, because otherwise you'd be here all day. I used to find this uh, fight quite annoying when I first uh, played it, but now I really enjoy it. Um, with the review that's coming out soon, I, I talk about how this is really playing into uh, Supergiant Games' strengths. Like, their fantastic music and audio design crossed with a boss fight. It's just really good. 1v1, me skiller, come on now. And she's almost out of health and ready for our final phase don't really get the point of the final phase you'll probably see it here I'll just do the area of effect B cast which will trap in all the mini fish that pop out and I'll just wail on Skiller I don't think there's any other way to deal with this final section and it's actually really good because she just like she's just constantly throwing her hand in the air to call upon the fish, which is uh, a very weak move. <laughs> Not a bad outcome. So it's really, so even when we lose our um, strongest element, uh, we are still kicking plenty of ass. I also forget in this run that I upgraded Tula, so I could have got her to fish a couple of times. Instead, I only get her to fish once, which was poor show by me. Oh yeah, and I take gold purse just because it's close to leveling up. And there's nothing I really want super desperately in the morning fields. Noticing that you get hidden in the grass. I think out of the areas, um, I like the game design of Morning Fields quite a lot, but I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic design. Yeah, I like these fights. I like that you can um, back into other enemies, and I like that just it it takes away the the thing of rooms upon rooms upon rooms upon rooms. Just get a bigger place to go. And what do I pick here? Upgrade in power per hit. Now, if I don't take that last one... Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> we are relying really heavily on the Omega attack, but that's that's okay, I think. I'm trying to think of what that um, other uh, non-activated boon I have down there is. That chaos curse of mine is finally gone. In the name of Hades. Our gold purse leveled up. We still have something there. Oh, sprint. Sprint with defense. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and then I'm just like sonicking my way around. So, so far, a really solid build. I think this with any weapon would be pretty strong. Uh, Zeus? Yeah, more Zeus. Go get Zeus. <laughs> 
We skipped the fight that was in there. Oh yeah, chain lightning. This is what this is the piece la resistance of this uh, build. So it was, so the spin attack hitting multiple times, and then with every hit, this chain lightning is very good. So I agonize over this choice for for a minute there. See, I'm I'm really thinking about it, and I go, okay, let's go see Echo. Let's go see Echo. And uh, what do we find instead? Oh, we get some flowers. Oh yeah, we find Nemesis here. Nemesis has scared Echo away. Okay, well, maybe Nemesis will give us something uh, worthwhile here instead. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call foreshadowing. Uh, so yeah, we get a <laughs> we get a death defied. You can see me clicking it multiply, just like out of frustration. And then I'm just like, oh, what door you're gonna pick? I'm picking that one, <laughs> just as a final fuck you. Like, god damn, absolutely robbed. Um, we had another time jump there in case you were like, this doesn't look like what he chose. Um, as you can see from our health bar, that last the last couple of rooms were pretty brutal. <laughs> Oh yeah, air quality. Air quality works really well with the chain lightning. Because the chain lightning does like, on base I think it does like 10 damage. So that immediately makes it 30. For us we have a higher version, so I think it's on 25 going up to 30. But if you have anything like Artemis' arrows or anything of that nature, that um, don't hit very strong but come out quite regularly, it's really good for those situations. You see I... It keeps dropping the uh, the AOE attack on himself, and I'm so frustrated because I just want to swing to win. Chucking Miasma at me. Not cool, Cerberus. Not cool at all. I hope eventually you can get Cerberus as an animal familiar. It might be something that's in the game already, and I just haven't found it yet. But uh, that would be really cool. So we're already on 50% health. Just every single one of those oh, is rough watching yourself fail. <laughs> every single one of those spins is a uh, really strong like. And I get caught out by the AoE attack right on the edge of it. It feels a little bit unfair, but we we're already playing with fire, so it makes sense. But that huge damage coming off. Yeah, this is the spin to win build. <laughs> it's just spins for days. Taking some really unnecessary damage here, but um, this is what happens when I get into boss fights. I get really reckless. I get greedy and reckless. It's huge damage. Look, look at this greed. Look at that greed. <laughs> this is so greedy. <laughs> I gotta say, really, the the boss fights in this one are really good. I I think the. Uh, Fury's got quite annoying in some of their fights in Hades 1. They were really like, um, they, they weren't on the same level. You, there's some Furies you really didn't want to come across and some which were fine. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of um, the Minotaur and Theseus fights. It's a bit brutal. I think the ones in this game are generally easier. I think this Cerberus one is probably the easiest. It's just about space and distance mostly. Other than the headmistress fight. She'll just stand there and cast in the opposite direction <laughs> while you <laughs> carve a line for her spine. It's great. And then of course we switch to Knuckle Bones. Was there any other option? I'm um, skipping forward. Go hang out with Hades for a second. I'm probably going to have to put a spoiler warning at the start of this full sequence. But I like this exchange. It's quite endearing. Hades just trying to get to know the daughter that he's never known uh, a little bit better. It's quite sweet. Neither the time nor place. So I already know what upgrade we get here. Some of my upgrades I've completely forgotten um, between recording this and doing the audio. So here we take uh, Darkness. Which gives us another layer of defense. So 
<coughs> we have the boon for dodge. And then if we don't dodge, we end up... Oh, the disrespect, gathering marble. <laughs> if we don't dodge, then we have the... We have the darkness as a backup. I forget about it throughout most of the rest of this run. Even in the final fight. Which, if I remembered, I would have made better use of. Because we actually have a really good build to make use of it. Because we can, once we go darkness, we can then charge our spin attack and just sit behind stuff ready to go. I like how I get cute at times and I'm like, no, I'm not going to just use the spin attack this entire run. I'm going to do other moves. And then I start to get beaten up and I'm just like, no, wait, uh, spin attack, please. <laughs> We're now on to... Oh, uh, extra life based on mana. Just a little bit of a boost to our health. We're on 232 health, 190 odd mana, 50 of which is our lightning bounce. 193, uh, 293, going into the final fight. Looking longingly at the Aphrodite boons. So, yeah, we'll take the Ecstatic Obsession. Not really much use of us against Kronos. And even there, I'm looking at the other one like, would I make use of this? And I think I figure that sprinting isn't going to be a big part of our repertoire. So we'll take the Legendary just so we can say we took a Legendary. I also have a... I have a Legendary which is activated by Air Boon, so I might be thinking about that. And there we go, we've got uh, Wispy Wiles. No, maybe I'm thinking about it here. That's another 15% dodge chance. So even if we haven't had the other boon upgraded, we have 25% dodge chance. So one in four strikes are not gonna hit us. And then the three and four that do hit us, we go to darkness, which is, is pretty defensive. It gives us a bunch of survivability. And there's a, uh, a rat lad who is in love with us. <laughs> So this is probably my fourth or fifth fight with Kronos. Technically we're fighting him at one heat, which is not the usual path for your first however many fights with the end boss of Hades. And he's uh, chatting about Siphon Scythe action. We'll take that. Really cool to get um, Thanatos' Scythe from Hades 1. Straight into spin to win. Knuckle Bones hits. 25% health already gone from Mr. Kronos. And that was a miss. See, there you go. That's immediately our dodge chance helping out. I'm determined to use spin to win here as much as possible. It will probably cause me a lot more pain than it should. Oh yeah, we've got all three of our heals um, off camera. Uh, the room before uh, the shop was a fountain, so we got to heal up and restore our three heals. They're only still 25 apiece, I think, the heals. I guess we'll see in this fight if they're 25 apiece. But yeah, we really do have a, a solid build for taking on Kronos. And this is our first run with this weapon. I do do most of my runs, so far at least, with the um, the axe. So the moveset and everything is very familiar to me. I don't tend to use the spin move, but I mean, this is showing me that that is <laughs> very powerful. And you see there only takes 10 mana to charge up our spin move, which is just great. So we used that one death defied earlier through my own stupidity, shall we say. <laughs> and we still have three, which is pretty good. We haven't used one for phase one so far. We'll see if that lasts. I think it might, I can't remember. Eating a bit of the spin attack kind of unnecessarily, but we already used our heal to basically undo the foolish mistake we made. There is an upgrade for that move where it will heal the a certain percentage of the damage taken in the last 3 seconds. It might even be all the damage in the last 3 seconds. 
which is huge. It's for moments like that where you're just, you make a very silly mistake or you take a huge risk and it doesn't pay off, just immediately heal out of it. I realize that he's too far away to hit me, so I'm just going to deal with his flags, but he gets me with the spin. The power of the spin cannot be underestimated. Look at that. Just It just absolutely demolishes his health. Really can't use the, spe the over special in this uh, fight. Just do not have the time. And there's me waiting for the third strike that doesn't come, so... Hang out in the hourglass and get him into second phase. Second phase of Kronos is pretty nutty. I'd say as a whole, like, he's harder than Hades. Probably. If you don't... If you don't stand on that circle, 100 like, health bar gone. Guaranteed. Does how much? Uh, 800 damage? If you have 800 health to spare, sure. Eat that hit. <laughs> and here's me just like... Probably getting a little bit, you know, heart rate up. A little bit nervous. It happens when you know you've got a really good build and you get to the end, you're like... The most of it, can I not put all of my hard work and luck to, to good use? Will I fail at the last hurdle? So far taking off good health. I wonder where the... I know that I at least use one death to fight. It's got to be coming up. Yeah, there it is. Hard to dodge the scythe and the, uh, the clock hands at the same time. And that's probably the realization there that um, whenever he drops into those moves where he stands still for a bunch, those are my perfect moments to strike. Dodge the clock hands. There's a lot going on in this fight. If you're quite overwhelmed by a lot of visual stimuli on screen in one go, this is a tough fight. And now look at that, he's just like, come and stand next to me while you dodge my Omega attack and I'm just like, yeah sure. Don't worry about it, I'll do that. <laughs> Trying to finish off the last few hourglasses. Get far enough behind him, he's not going to hit me with the blade. So close. So close. So one death defied used, two remaining. Really happy with that boss fight. So that's my second win on Kronos. Prophecy foretold. And I see a lot more in my future with Thanatos' Scythe. So there you go. Tons of damage. One heat run. Um, yeah, Thanatos' Scythe um, absolutely slaps. If you like the the axe and want on a turner that's uh, quite strong, quite fast... Um, that's the weapon for you. Anyway, um, thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you did, check me out on Twitch where we've been playing a bunch of this on stream. So I think we're playing something different tomorrow. We'll find out. We'll see how we do. Yeah, like and subscribe. We'll be covering Hades in a full review, as well as many other roguelikes. And yeah, that's all I've got time for you today. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Enjoy Thanatos' Scythe. Okay, bye!